That being said, you have the option at any time in assisted living to hire outside services to come in and provide additional care so that whatever we're not allowed to do under the regulations, the outside services can do. And we welcome that. Some people that are on hospice or need additional care, if you have family that's local and family that's available, and unfortunately most people don't these days because everybody's working, your family can also come in and provide that additional care. So we would continue to have the 24-hour supervision and the, the meals and the housekeeping and everything, but if you needed more nursing care, then we wouldn't that we you know then we're allowed to provide then you would have to get outside services what we don't do in assisted living is if you're if you're incontinent there are certain you know sort of thresholds where it's time to move on it's time you know and, and we have to talk to the family if you're incontinent on a regular basis assisted living typically doesn't handle that we don't use lifts if you need two people to get in and out of bed if you're not safe going in and out of the bathroom at that point we need to have a conversation with you and your family about what's best for you, what's safe for you. Most importantly, how, what's going to keep you the most dignified. Because, because in any of these environments, there's a point at which you're there too long. Exactly. Now, if, if you could, I'd like you to transition into price. Because the main yep. objection at assisted living always, always, well, not always, but often is, I can't afford this. So I got Frank and Mary here, my hypothetical okay. couple who've got $3,500 a, a month in income, right? Okay. They happen to have, by the way, they happen to have a very valuable house because I last did this presentation last week in Nantucket. That's actually the average house. I was that, wondering where they were. Yeah, no, yeah. That is, it is astonishing. It is astonishing, the prices, right? Of the, not, that's way below, actually, the average house, right? So, but, so, but, so if the issue is you got your house, you got a small amount of cash, you don't want to run it all down. So how much is this going to cost? How can Frank and Mary possibly think about you know living? So talk about costs, and then Patty surveys, who who actually there was a policeman chasing her into the building. <laughs> I noticed she made this an incredible time from from Walrope. Is going to be it will will be talking about the veterans benefit and how it could connect to this. So if you could just briefly kind of talk to us about costs, Absolutely. and then we're going to talk about the veterans benefit. Thank you, John. So there's a wide range of cost in assisted living. As a whole, assisted living can start at about $3,000 and it can go up to $10,000. So as you're looking as where you're going to live, I also caution you, make sure you ask a very specific question when you go to an assisted living. Do you charge on a tiered program? Are you going to charge me to put my socks on? Are you going to charge me to make my bed? Are you going to charge me to walk me down to the dining room? Because all of a sudden, you may buy into an assisted living that tells you you're going to pay $3,000 a month, and then you get the bill at the end of the month with all these itemized programs, all of a sudden you're paying $5,000 a month. How did that happen? You really have to be very cautious with tiered programs, okay? At Christopher Heights, we do a year lease. When you sign a lease with us, what we say you're paying, you're paying for that year. There are no additional charges. And again, that's a very important question. We also have, we're very unique because we have subsidized programs that most assisted livings do not have, okay? We are a low-income tax credit community. 50% of our apartments are under a subsidized program, so we are very affordable. What that means is that if you have under $2,000 in assets and your yearly income is under $37,000 for the year, you qualify for MassHealth to pay a large portion of what your stay amount is, okay? So what we would be charging you on that lease that you sign is what your monthly income is. So when you're planning with your family and you're thinking about this, you want to find out what is your Social Security income, what's your pension income, do you have annuities, do you have any other income? 
And I'll let Patty talk about the VA because the nice thing about the VA is that's not counted for that 37, you know, it's 36, 960, something like that for the, the amount. But that income's not counted, so you can still qualify. The veterans benefit is just fabulous. So how we do it at Christopher Heights is we take your monthly income, you keep $75 a month for personal needs. If you're paying insurance, if you have Fallon or you have Tufts or you have an outside insurance, then we deduct that as well, and there's a base amount. So you suddenly go from paying three to $10,000 a month to paying $1,200 a month based on what your income is. Again, it's based on what your monthly income is. So yes, assisted living is affordable for a large number of you. If you have $35,000 in assets, that's golden for us. Most assisted livings you go to, they want a $200,000, they want $80,000 buy-in, they want... Yes, that's unaffordable for most of you. Because we, we're talking about Grafton, we're talking about, you know, we're not talking at Target. <coughs> so what, what's the average house here? $150,000. If you come to us and say, you know, I have $35,000 in the bank, that's it. Mom's got $35,000, Dad's got $35,000. All right, we're going to sit down with you. We're going to talk about what your monthly income is. Are you eligible for the veterans benefit? We can probably make that $35,000 last two years based on what your income is, if you get a veterans benefit, et cetera. So it is very affordable depending on where you're looking. Again, there's no tiered programs. You've got to ask that question because if you sign a lease with me and it says you're paying $3,800 for that apartment for the year, I'm not going to go up on you. Six months down the road, I'm not going to say, by the way, I had to bring Mary down to the dining room four times this week, so we're going to tack on another $500. Again, those expenses add up very, very quickly. Those are the hidden expenses in assisted living that scare me. When I have somebody come and see me, they moved into an assisted living, and they say, well, we're paying $10,000 a month. Well, you might as well be in a nursing home, because that's what a nursing home is going to cost you. Why are you paying $10,000 a month to be in assisted living? Now, now, Jerry, before we segue into Patty, yeah. what, I'd like you to, what I'd like you to do, though, is to give us, if you're, if you're not in a subsidized program, you're in a regular program, and you're in a single or a, or, you know, a, a one-bedroom, or a, you have two-bedroom units and one You don't have two bedrooms. You <coughs> have, you have one, studio, alcove, and one-bedroom okay, units. Okay, so if you're, if you're in a, in a one-bedroom unit, or if, which one's more, studio or alcove? What's alcove is, is $4,600 a month. Okay, and, what's, and what is a one-bedroom? 5200 a month. 5, and it can go up to 5700 a month depending on the square footage. Right. So what I'd like you to do, because once again, one of the things you want to be aware of, and by the way, that's why, as, as, as Jerry mentioned, there are a variety of assisted living facilities. You want to check out a bunch of them, mm -hmm. right? You want to do that now. You know, if you, you know, if you were going to go to, you know, hang around at BJ's for the day, <laughs> instead, go see assisted living facilities, you know? It's the same thing, you're walking around, you're shopping, you know, you look, right? To get a sense of what they are, right? But I, but but even for the regular priced units, the regular priced units, I'm I'm slow. Do me again, an alcove or a one bedroom? Uh, one bedroom would be fifty six, fifty two hundred, but it can right. go up. Right. Um, an alcove would start at forty four hundred. So forty four or fifty two hundred. Now remember, if you're Frank or Mayor, Frank and Mary, you're making thirty five hundred dollars a month, right? And when you're in assisted living. You're, you're eating their food, mostly their food, and you're doing most of the things that you're now you're now doing on your dime are now happening in assisted living. So your gap is not huge, right? In Frank and Mary's case, in both cases, they would be having to spend down some of their cash in order to afford it, but not a lot. How much are you spending? A thousand, two thousand dollars a month, maybe, to be able to afford this. So in, in, in many cases, it really is affordable. It is. Jerry, I want to thank you very much. I want to hold some time for questions at yep. the end, and I want Patty now to talk to you about the veterans benefit and how it could play into this. Would that right. be okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Patty, your Thank you. Thank you. And A afterwards. very fast driver. <laughs> and you, you just want to make sure that you're not you're not in the shadow there. Okay. She may be about where Jerry was over there, just in the thought. But don't I want my face to be on TV? Oh, it's going to be. Well, it's up to you. It is up to you. It is up to you. This is my good side. <laughs> so, 
And afterwards, I'm going to tell Arthur that it isn't an hour from Marlboro. It's only 30 minutes. I have a feeling he did not take the pike. My daughter takes viola lessons in Grafton, so I was like, I'll be there in 30. <laughs> okay, so um, what we're going to be talking about is the VA's basic pension with aid and attendance. Um, it's a pen benefit that's been around since 1952. Am I in charge of the? You can be. Okay. If you so like. Thank to. you. Yes. It's been around since 1952, and what its um, general purpose is is to allow veterans who serve during a period of war and their surviving spouses to age in place a little bit longer than the person who did not serve during a period of war. In order to qualify for the part that's called aid and attendance, you have to require the aid and attendance of another person. It's basically a medical diagnosis. So the VA is saying, hey, senior veterans, um, surviving spouses of wartime veterans, if you need the aid and attendance of another person, we've got a program that might be able to help you out financially. It's a tax-free benefit, too. Okay, so the maximum award for 2013 for a surviving spouse is $1,113 a month. For a single veteran, $1,732 a month. For a um, veteran with a spouse, $2,054 a month. Now that's the maximum if a married veteran, and it's the veteran who needs the aid and attendance of another person. But sometimes the veteran is fine and it's his wife who needs the aid and attendance of another person. The VA doesn't call it this, but we call it this. That would be a well veteran with an ill spouse. And in that case, the maximum benefit is $1,360 per month. Again, these are all tax free. Okay? So um, the VA is not just going to give this money to everybody who comes walking in. So it's a lot of money. And so there are a lot of criteria around it. The first one is being a wartime veteran. And what that means is that you served at least one day during an active period of war at least 90 days in total, and were other than dishonorably discharged. So in some cases, you can have a bad conduct discharge. What was bad conduct back in the 40s might not be considered bad conduct today, right? If you were a female veteran and you got pregnant, you got a bad conduct discharge. They can't keep you from those benefits today because of that. Um, one thing I really like to point out here is a lot of people don't realize that World War II ended on December 31st, 1946. They think it ended in 45, but that year of peacekeeping counts for benefits. I've actually given speeches before where someone in the crowd who was there to um, find out about the benefit for his brother learned for the first time that he is officially a World War II veteran because he went in in 46. 